Hi, it's Nikki here and welcome to another video. Just uh, FYI, if my voice sounds weird, it's because I've just had a cold that I'm still getting over, so my voice is a bit gross and snotty for a while and it's still kind of lingering a teeny bit so if I sound a bit weird uh that's why. The second thing just before we get into the fun paint with me slash Q&A video I just updated my Etsy shop with some new prints and stickers and greetings cards well there's only one new sticker really but yeah prints greetings cards on one sticker I'll leave the link in the description box below, but please go and check it out because I'm really proud of these new products that are in my shop at the minute. They're some of the best work I've ever made. And yeah, I just wanna spread the word with everyone because I'm super proud of it. So hope you'll forgive that shameless self-promotion, but sometimes it needs to be done. So this painting that I'm doing right now is of a adorable little Highland cow and I made it for my boss who, well she's now my ex-boss because she left the company that I work for and yeah I just wanted to do this little painting as kind of like a leaving gift because she was a really good boss. So yeah, just a little gouache coloured pencil painting that I did for her and uh, she seemed to really like it so yeah, success. Now on to the Q&A. So I did a little cheeky Instagram story asking if anyone had any questions that they wanted answering in this video. And whenever I do that, I don't know why, but Instagram seems to only show it to like a tiny handful of people. So I ended up only getting four questions from that. So, <laughs> so I have four questions from the Q&A sticker that I did on Instagram to answer. And then I just did a quick scan through my recent Instagram comments and YouTube comments just to find any questions on there that I thought might be fun to answer in this video. So yeah, let's get into it. So the first question from the Instagram story was, what kind of printer do you use? You'll have seen that printer on this channel a whole bunch of different times, but people are always asking me what printer it is. I use an Epson XP960. I'm just looking at it because it's right next to me. It's a printer scanner. It's pretty good quality, it's quite expensive, so it's a bit of an investment. And yeah, it scans well, prints well. A lot of it is to do with which kind of paper you use. I use paper from a company called Photo Paper Direct, um, which is quite cheap and does a job, but I don't know, I would recommend it if you're just starting out. I'm hopefully gonna be moving away from it in the future and using something a bit more sustainable, bit higher quality, but for what I need it for now, it does the job. But yeah, I definitely recommend an Epson XP960 printer if you can afford it. So the second question was, do I prefer watercolour or gouache more? 100% prefer gouache. Uh, I used to be a watercolour girl back in the day, like a few years ago, but it's just not, I think it, it potentially was the watercolours I was using, but I just don't find that the colours are vibrant enough. I don't find that the colours are opaque enough, obviously, because it's watercolour. And I just much prefer with gouache. I mean, I don't use gouache straight out the tube. I put them into a palette and let them dry and then use them very similarly to watercolour, but I just find that the colours are way more opaque, way more vibrant, and you can layer them so much more effectively than you can watercolour for me. So yeah, I definitely prefer gouache. Although I do still use watercolour, so all of the paintings that I did in my in my sketchbook for my Scotland trip, they were all watercolour because that's just what I had with me at the time. And they were fun enough to use, but you can definitely tell that the colours aren't as nice as gouache. So the third question was, do you use picture references for drawing animals? Um, I do. I am slightly embarrassed to say that I almost can't draw anything from my brain. <laughs> um, apart from, I drew some, I drew a bear from my head in a meeting at work a couple of weeks ago and it actually turned out pretty well, but I was drawing a lot of bears at the time. So I think probably in a couple of months if I tried to draw the same bear, I wouldn't be able to. Yeah, it's one of my goals is to use picture references a lot less because I do rely on them quite a lot. I try to use multiple picture references for pieces and sort of mash them together so I'm not I'm not really copying one 
picture at a time it's kind of an amalgamation of a few different pictures so it's more of a unique piece in the end and yeah I just I just get pictures from Pinterest usually although I do sometimes use free stock image websites like Pexels is a really good one but yeah I do use pictures I would like to get away from using pictures so heavily but yeah I do use pictures and then the fourth question kind of relates is how do you draw the anatomy of so many different kinds of animals so well? Well, the simple answer to that is I don't. Uh, <laughs> I was quite flattered by that question actually because I don't think my animal anatomy is good at all. I think when you're doing animal art and wildlife art, you can really get away with a lot more because people don't always know what the anatomy should look like. It's not like if you do a drawing of a person and someone's gonna go, well, I know that a leg doesn't bend that way. You can get away with a lot more, which I think is probably why potentially this person thinks I'm good at drawing anatomy when I'm not. But I mean, all I can say is just that I use reference pictures, like I said before, and you just have to kind of see them as shapes rather than what the thing actually is. Um, if you like, just look at the sort of block shapes of an animal rather than being like oh that's its nose and that's its eye I don't know it just makes it easier to draw because then you're kind of disconnecting yourself from what you think you should be drawing and you're actually drawing what it looks like so this next stack of questions I found in my youtube comments so it's from you guys watching so the first one is I was just wondering if you check all of your art supplies to see if they are vegan and the answer is kind of yes and no. I'm sure I've said before in another video that I am trying to, moving forward, use almost exclusively vegan art supplies. It is very difficult to find vegan art supplies because not a lot of art supply companies are very forthcoming with how they make their art supplies. But I do also have a lot of art supplies from before I went vegan and from like sort of previously where I wasn't really thinking about it as much so rather than throwing those away I'm going to continue to use them and then things that I know definitely definitely aren't vegan like some pigments of paint have like is it called ox gall it's like part of a cow some paint pigments have that in um, I think it's black has it in a lot of the time so when those paints that I have that have that in that when I finish that tube of paint I won't buy it again I'll just either get a different colour that I can use in the same way or a different brand so yeah it's kind of a tough one it's a bit of a grey area and it's not quite as simple as having a vegan diet or you know beauty products or clothing and stuff um it's a bit more of a grey area it's more difficult but I'm doing my best and that's all you can do so so in the second question from YouTube is are you self-taught or did you learn art in school? Again, it's a bit of both really because I have a degree in animation and illustration. I did fine art A-level and then I went on and did a foundation diploma in art and design. So that was a year of college, did that at Leeds College of Art. And then I went to Anglia Ruskin in Cambridge aka Cambridge School of Art and I did a BA in illustration and animation and Honestly, it was far more animation than an il illustration, in my opinion. It wasn't as 50-50 as I might have liked, and um, I think it was a lot to do with the mind space I was in at the time, and kind of how much effort I wanted to put into it, and sort of what I wanted to get out of art at the time, but I just didn't get as much out of that course as I think I could have. I think a lot of the way that I paint and draw now, especially, is self-taught. Uh, just through making stuff. I don't know, it's difficult, it's a really difficult question to answer because I think I got to where I am now a lot through teaching myself stuff and just just making stuff but then there are things that I do that I definitely have learned from school so it's definitely a little bit of both. Okay so these last stack of questions I just had a little scan through my Instagram comments and found some that I thought were interesting to answer so the first to kind of go together and they're questions that I get a lot about commissions, whether I do commissions in general and whether I do specifically tattoo commissions. Commissions in general, not doing at the minute. I would like to do in the future and if I am going to do commissions, I'll probably do them over on Etsy and have listings for the commissions rather than taking them privately just so that I have sort of the security of Etsy in terms of like payment and stuff. Um, but no, I don't currently do them at the minute because I work a full-time job and just do art on the side. I literally don't have time and sort of selfishly 
when I come home from a day of work and I'm gonna paint or draw, I wanna paint and draw things that I wanna paint and draw and not things that other people are talking Cause, Because when you're a graphic designer, you're constantly just doing work that other people want all day. Like, <laughs> people are just like, can you make a thing that looks like this and you do it? So when I come home, I'm like, I'm gonna draw what I wanna draw. As I said, I would like to do them in future when I have time. So keep an eye out on my Etsy if you are interested in that because that's where it'll be. Um, and in terms of tattoo commissions, no, I don't do tattoo commissions. If you want a tattoo and you want it drawn for you, go to a tattoo artist. <laughs> um, so the final question of from Instagram and the final question overall is how do you manage your art time and work schedule so well to make such refined pieces um i don't think my pieces are that refined in fairness but thanks um, <laughs> so yeah so like i said i work a full-time job i'm a full-time graphic designer and then i just do my art stuff on the side a lot of it is the fact that i don't really have much of a social life and i don't really do anything much outside of work so I do have that time to just sit in my studio and draw and paint and I'm quite happy to do that because I'm quite happy to just be on my own frankly and because I love drawing and painting and it's like a really therapeutic thing for me it isn't difficult and it isn't work for me to come and sit in here and do it sometimes it is like when I'm burnt out and I'm really tired it's difficult to do but that's when that's when we take breaks and then in terms of sort of like practical things like I batch cook things a lot which means I don't have to spend any time on an evening cooking so like on a sunday we'll cook something for monday tuesday dinner and then on a tuesday night i'll cook wednesday thursday dinner and then friday night i have a night off anyway so so monday night wednesday night and thursday night are completely free for me to do whatever i want so i literally just come home whatever it is is in a microwavable tub i'll usually cook like i don't know some pasta or some rice to go with it like depending on what kind of thing it is chuck nothing in the microwave eat it it's delicious and then i'll just scurry upstairs and paint slash draw for however long. I'm also really lucky in that I have Colin because he does a lot of stuff around the house and helps me out like he'll do the washing up often and he makes my lunches for me as well a lot of the time. Don't get me wrong I do my fair share of like housework and stuff like on the weekends but during the evenings he's pretty good at picking stuff up for me. So that's it, that's the that's the end of the painting and the end of the questions. I feel like I've rambled on for absolutely forever. I hope that was useful to you. I hope uh, you found that interesting. I hope you enjoyed watching the painting. But yeah, I'm gonna end it here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're taking care of yourself and keeping safe. Hopefully my voice is a bit less snotty in the next video. <laughs> I'm working on a vlog at the minute, so that should be up very soon. Don't forget to check me out on Etsy and Instagram and all of the various things. They're all linked in the description box below. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!